I love fear. And the reason why, behind every fear is a person you want to be. Fear is self-imposed, meaning it doesn't exist. You create it, you can destroy it too. It's an intangible. If you face your fears, guys, you will realize it's not that big. And once you face it, you go, oh my God, man, I spent all this time running from it. It was so small. If I just faced it, my God, not only did I face it, I beat it back, energy is never lost, transferred. That negative energy, that fear, is destroyed. It comes back in as confidence. You're like, what else, am I, what else am I capable of? What else am I holding my back from that I'm capable of more? What am I running from I don't need to? What else can I overcome? You face your fears, you become the person you want to be. You run from your fears, you're not living. You're alive, but you're not taking the freedom. You're not running the day. The day's running you. You always be the fucking servant, not the master, guys. If you find a fear, the quickest, the easiest way you can beat it is initially, right when it comes in. Success, guys, a very, very lonely road, man. Very few people are willing to endure the pain, the sacrifice, the due diligence to be successful. It's an uphill battle. And along that road, you're not gonna see too many friends. You're gonna see your shadow most often. You gotta trust in the heart of hearts, inside what you're doing, what you believe in, is a worthy cause, a winnable fight. See, the thing is, for many people, they've tried the same path you're on, and they failed. As you walk this journey, you're gonna see carcasses all over the place of people that didn't quite have it. It should inspire you because you got further than that person and that person. But you're not looking to get further than them, you're looking to finish. So now you're down that path and you're all alone. How do you know you're on the right path? How do you know what you're doing is in the right direction? If you're wondering if you're on the right path, look at the small things of life. How do you do that? When you wash your car, you spend an hour washing your car. When you finish washing, you put the hoses and everything away and the brushes and come outside to look at the job you did, but you notice the spot's missing. What do you do? Do you re-grab the hoses, pull it all out, and finish the job right? Or do you say, you know, it's good enough? And it's good enough. So the thing about good enough is we don't know if it's enough. Until the end hour, the final hour, and everything's on the, on the line. We, that's when we find out if it is enough. And if we come up short, Man, doesn't that suck? I promise you guys, if today you never say good enough, tomorrow you'll always have enough. What I'm saying is a character of who you are. 
It's not the title that makes you. It's not the success that makes you. The character defines the success, defines the fame, and it starts right there. Championships aren't won in the theater or the arena. They're won in the thousands of hours in the training room, in the labs, in the 5 a.m. runs, when it's raining, when everyone else is sleeping. That's when it's won. The Harvard champion is a light switch that's always on. It doesn't go on and off when someone's watching. It's constant. It's how you look at something. If your name's attached to it, then you do it right. The best of your ability every single time. If you're dusting your countertops, do you dust around the picture frame? Or do you pick the f up and dust the entire thing? Do the job right or don't do it at all. That's the same person who has his hand raised on the podium one day. Same mother how you hold yourself in the small things of life build the character winning blocks of the things that we remember for. I see them as one and one the same, guys. It begins right now with no one looking, man. And how you hold yourself, how you see yourself. What do you do when no one's watching? If you do it then, I guarantee you, you'll be doing it whenever. I race with love. That was the, the mantra that I held on race day that on race morning, I said thank you to all my, uh, my friends and family and everyone around me as I always do and, and got a big hug and took their energy with me. And I said, if you've seen me out when past, you just say something about love. Just tell me you've, you've got the love or you love it. Just to remind me why I'm out there. Just to remind me that it's not it's not a bad thing to be hurting. That I'm here because I want to hurt. I'm here because I enjoy it. I enjoy the pain. I enjoy the challenge. I enjoy pushing myself and finding more out about myself. As we all do as Ironman athletes, that's what we're here for. That's what we do in all our hours of training. We question what we're doing. We question why and we, we, we grow from it though. We don't, we don't recline and, and go within and just close off, we, we grow from it and I hope, as Leander said, we all go from this and, and grow and uh, take what we've learned from this race. But when I had my doubts, I relaxed and I told myself, don't worry, Pete, you, you love this. You love running. What are you doing? Don't, don't question it. And just cleared my mind once again and I uh, did that several times throughout the run. I just focused on enjoying it. And, I, and every now and then I'd think, geez, this is, maybe this is why Chrissy's always smiling. Because I could never figure out why she smiled so much. But every now and then I found myself smiling when I told myself, you love this. And it was just an incredible feeling.